All right, hit to go. Eddie's like, he had the withdrawals. And I called him up and like, okay, Eddie, I'll fix your computer. I'm going to get up there, and, and I'm going to let come get you. I'm about to go to the beach. <laughs> so I'm like, the fuck? So I just played Final Fantasy all day. And I'm like, oh, he's probably got withdrawals of freaking Monster Hunter at the beach, man. He's got to get that no, shit. He's always digging fish. around in the sand for it. <laughs> no, I caught fish. <laughs> and fish. And a turtle. Well, somebody called a turtle. Did you turn it in for research points, man? You get the research yeah, points. Yeah, all right. Yeah. He carved it up, man. He had, he had the, beach, the toenails. <laughs> carved it down. Freaking uh, <laughs> fucking fish. Got research points. You have to play some more one day, Chad. We have to get you deep, deep, rooted, addicted. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, oh man, he's got to fight the monkey. There's a, there's a couple of Steam games. We'll, we'll have to, you know, we got to kind of group together and plan that shit out in advance. Because you know, if you're going to get involved in something that takes like 40, 50 hours, um, you got to kind of plan in advance. Something like maybe Borderlands Three or. Yeah. Uh, um, I like Remnant of Ashes. I know that'd be kind of rough for most people, and that's, that's only a three-player game. And I don't know how to what Remnant Remnant of Ashes or what it, from the Ashes. I, I wanted to try it, but I'm afraid to. I mean, I've got a complete playthrough. You could see me on YouTube, Abby, if you ever made a Google account. But you know, uh, but and stuff like that. And of course, uh, Path of Exile too. I think that's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be. It might be this year. I was about to say, I was wondering hey, when it would come love out. Love it. Looks like Diablo 2. The original path, yeah, this new one looks better than Diablo 4 does. It like shits on it. And of course, uh, there's another one, this an independent one, Eddie. I, don't, I haven't told you about it. It's called Wilson. Um, it's kind of flaky. It's, I think it should have, I don't know if it's an early access, but it should be. Um, it wasn't really ready to go. Um, Charlie played through it. It don't have classes, so it's literally just building up skills. So that's like everybody ends up using turrets or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how it works. But that seems kind of interesting to me. And it's supposed to just traditional world. You have to be a wizard. You have to be a barbarian shit. I wish it was an XCOM game like that with multiplayer. <clears throat> It'd be fun. Yeah. You just go all a turn-based, on. turn-based multiplayer. I don't think Civilization is, but I mean, imagine how long that would take. That'd be like it's fucking playing chess. Or, you like playing chess over the internet. A defense thing where you go on missions. A tower defense. You fight in aliens and you try to, you know, take back the earth. Take back the earth. You talking about we EDS? We don't want the earth, man. Have you seen it lately? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. really don't want the earth. Which segues into this. Um, Chad, you won't be able to hear these people chatting, but it should pop up one more the, the video. Uh, and I think it's going to pop up on like. The audio, too, I believe so. Um, About dinosaur lives, Matt. Dinosaur lives, Matt. Dinosaur. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way. Is this like one of those videos where they're like trying to stand still and not move? And pick, I, I forgot what that was. Well, it kind of looks like that because their mouths ain't moving because they got masks on. I love on. my black neighbors the same as my white ones. Do you think it'd be like everybody that looked like they're in Cobra and G.I. Joe cartoons, like with the mask on eventually? It's just like everybody has one. <laughs> everybody's yeah. snake eyes. Yep. No, I was thinking just the, the, the little Cobra guys, you know, like the minions. Yeah. I've been watching that a lot lately. Um, you can get those masks pretty cheap now. I got them a damn, like, I ordered them on Amazon one day yeah. and they came back in. Like, I, it was like a 50 pack and they're reusable. They've get, they're getting better and better. Um, and I, I mean, I could just, there's already fashion type masks that have words on them uh, or logos. Let's just say that I know somebody uh, very specific who is selling masks and has probably made more in the past month than I have. Uh, yeah. Let's just say that. Just, just <laughs> off the mask. Yeah, and it's just and, and, I think by, and they are not charged and they're not upcharging. It's literally like five dollars for a custom fabric mask. Yeah. And then. I could just see this fall, you're going to have Gucci mask. Um, hell, if they, they maybe they are already ready. There's going to be they fancy. got the trackini out. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. It's a bikini, it's a but it comes mask. with a matching mask. It's a trackini. Todd would do something like that. He Todd puts the big merch, but it's going to be a Fallout 76 mask first. You got to keep it. You got to keep it in the house. There's WWE uh, oh, mask dude, on your website. You got it, dude. <laughs> would, would it be the handlebar mustache? Yeah, I didn't know if you'd seen the WWE mask. Uh, 
They they literally started selling them. It was like one of them was like the Fiend, one of them was like Kane or something like that. <laughs> well, Bane, a Bane. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure there's Bane looking people and it's talking. <laughs> talking like that shit too. Um, I would totally wear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you gonna do when like the banks open back up? It's like are you like take your mask off? It's like no. What if they like start being like back in cowboy days where everybody has a bandana and they pull it up over their face all the time? That would be kind of cool. Like, what if bandanas came back into fashion just because of that? It's not. Well, I dusty. mean, bandanas it's are kind of sort of already. It's just um. Yeah, they're doing that because they don't have masks. And then, but you know, yeah, well, I mean, well, you you got your gang type mask, and then you know, World of Warcraft, you freaking trolls wear the mask. It's just. I mean, not the mask, but the bandanas. But, hey, man, maybe it's coming back. Uh, of course, you know, J.D. at work has got a freaking... He always likes the pictures of the wolves or whatever in nature, whatever, whatever crazy shit that is. He, he's got the he's got the freaking wolf and standing in front of the moon on, on the damn bandana, and he wears that as his mask. Okay. <laughs> just, I think um, they sell those as shirts at Walmart. Yeah, he, oh, he has uh... the shirts, and, of course, he, he has the, the license plates, all that freaking crazy wolf. Wolf in front of the moon, shit. He's got it, man. He's a werewolf. He's furry. Speaking of furry, <laughs> let's talk about um, whatever that crazy fucking shit we just saw, Pete, right there, where white people are like raising their hands, talking about they're not going to be racist right. no more. Um, <laughs> we got some just crazy, crazy shit going on. Let me go over the pictures first before I do this. Uh, let me see if I get those pictures. Damn it, they're the damn same picture. Here we go. Um, there's been some rioting going on in England over like Black Lives Matter, even though they don't have really any kind of sort of um, police brutality type shit. That that's not even really a, a factor there. This right here is Robert Peel, and he's kind of like the founder of modern police. The, the police thing is kind of it's kind of in the last 200 years. It's not. It's not like oh, and you know, in Jesus's time there was police officers. You would have like you have guards. Yeah, you'd have centurions and or whatever the fuck, the prelatorians, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Then um, master chiefs and shit, Spartans. <laughs> yeah, th th yeah, they were there. They it was kind of a military thing, and so they kind of made uh, the police was around the 1800s, late 1800s. I don't know. I don't know exactly all the history of the police, but you know, around the time of um, you know Jack the Ripper and shit like that, modern detective work and stuff. All that came out of Britain, Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard. Yeah, and so, so Robert. I was about to say. Robert Peel is um, one of the first kind of originals, originals of the police. And so it says, all cops are bastards. And it has the old sickle and hammer. Now, it's just, you know, yeah, just a symbol. Right there, that's, right? No, that's the symbol of Black Lives Matter, Eddie. Didn't you know that? No, that's a <laughs> signal. That's a symbol of communist Russia. But what does that got to do with Black Lives Matter? Nothing. They're communists. I think it does, but they're not related. This has nothing to fucking to do with George Floyd. And I'm going to say, and we're gonna try, I'm trying to work through and prove that all of the white people down there on their kneel, knees with their heads up in the hair chanting to, I mean, um, Jesus of wokeness or whatever, that that's really got nothing to do with honoring George Floyd. This is a crazy, crazy cult religion. Have you ever heard of the term SJW, Eddie? Uh, yeah, plenty. Okay. Plenty. Because you're on the internet. You know, I think I had to tell... Um, <laughs> hang on, hang on. I had to tell uh, Russell a couple years ago that he didn't know what SJW was. He ain't never heard it because, you know, he just does a little bit of Facebook, watches video games. He works 45 jobs. He ain't got time. If you're not on the internet, if you're not on Twitter, you're not hearing all this shit. I'm you're not like, on Twitter. What does it mean? But I am on YouTube. Yeah, but so you, so you're on YouTube, so you hear this shit. You hear it from, yeah. you hear it from your hero, Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, well, Mr. Jones got taken off of YouTube and everything else. I listen to him every once in a while, and he well, says well, the same stuff on, about on. globalist. Don't, don't go for the globalist shit. Go back, trying to keep this one layer at a time, okay, okay. Eddie? Okay, but recently— Why was he taken off? Recently— Why, why was he taken off, do you know? Okay, that was uh, a few years back. He was uh, bashing uh, a certain— political candidate and SJWs and all the, the trans and whatever. You don't so, remember, I don't remember, so I'm not asking. 
and they axed him. Who 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 was he making fun of? You don't remember? Uh, it was a culmination of things, and he was just being. Uh, <clears throat> What's the word I'm looking for? Just were you ousted. saying? Were you saying that he was canceled, Eddie? Is that the word yes. that you want to say? Canceled. He canceled. was canceled because he was speaking now about all these SJWs doing all kinds of stupid stuff, trying to change society and destroy it. Yeah, and we'll, I'm going to talk more and, about. And um, this is one of them. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk more about why there's a, there's a specific need from a religious sense or like the core of what they be of their being. Where you have to be the warrior part. The warrior part is actually more important than the social justice part, because if, no if you're not justice. if you're not out preaching the message, then you're just not a part of it. If you're not with them, it's, you're against them. Yeah, it, it pretty much. And so, um, sis. could that be the hammer and the sickle, man? And the Black Lives Matter. You ain't got it. So, dude, it is really a freaking. Mr. Booby Jones with a piercing speaks out about the communists are taking over. It's right here. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a deep it's, ass piercing. It is above the tit, and it goes it, out. It goes into the nipple, and it comes out is a pierced booby. So this Yours. right here, this might be the diamond stud, and that's just kind of like a chain. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. All right. And that there is a boob. Now you got it, bro. So like tits out up. for Harumbi. And what about this guy right here? What about this? What is this bird trying to represent? That is represented <laughs> that like you know that shit is underneath him. <laughs> So he will shit on your he will shit on your fucking views and your cops. He'll give a yep. fuck. He'll give a shit who you are. He shits on everybody. And goddamn pelicans, bro. I've got I've got statues of um nice statues of this like eagle looking thing that Daddy had had back in his day. And dude, the crows and shit, they do not like that goddamn eagle. And I, I put him up on a, a stump, a nice stump. It's a little prominent in the yard. And dude, they shit all over him. <laughs> Because they got eaten by two men. <laughs> Let's see what else I got in my pictures here. I was looking up because I heard William Churchill got defaced, and I thought that uh, yeah. they had put the hammer and sickle on him. I, I, I got the statues mixed up. This isn't the only stat. They looked. To, there was some kind of founder of Bristol or something that did a lot of slave trade. They literally pulled that statue down and threw it in the ocean um, or a river or something. Let's see about my next picture. This that. right here. Was what I found. This right here is not the one from a couple of days ago, but I, I definitely wanted to include it because you've got the booby titty right here, yep. and that, you've got all of this shit. Communism. Yep, this that right here, stolen right there, is from, and I cannot remember what it was. It was like it was like street man riots or something. It happened in 2000, so we're looking at over 20 years ago, um, where they defaced Winston Churchill um, back then, and they put the communist shit. I'm just trying to. Deeply go in that this isn't this isn't about George Floyd because George Floyd was alive 20 years ago. He was doing porn. I don't know if you knew that, Eddie. That's yes, a deep cut for you to look up. Yeah, he's on Pornhub. Oh, he's about six foot seven. So I'm just <laughs> suspecting that uh, he's in the old BBC genre, okay? And I'm not talking about British broad broadcasting. I ain't. I mean, I know we're talking about England right now. But there's another BBC, okay? Don't think too deep. Oh, he's bad. He's going to fall out. He can't handle this podcast. It's big, beautiful cocks. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to include that because I ended up finding that. I'm like, okay, this is it. clearly, you know, is it George Floyd? But this is this is the one that was just from a couple of days ago. So they put it in. He's a racist. Um, but Black Lives Matter. There was another statue. It might have been one that was closer to the ground. I remember some guy, um, the police was guarding it, and some guy just came up and like ripped the um, ripped the cardboard off and walked away. I think the police went and arrested him. It's like, uh, <laughs> you, you're not allowed to anti-protest. It's protest, Eddie, okay? You're not allowed to do anything. Anti-protest to protest. <laughs> you go up and rip that shit out, and you get arrested by the police. You're like, don't Which touch police? that. Evidence. There's... There's videos of police. They don't have anything besides batons. They don't have any of the cool um, SWAT commando gear. They didn't freaking pay to win, you know, on um, freaking Ghost Recon, jacked out, about to blow some shit up. And so the there's looters literally tracing them down the street. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They didn't have like right shields. No, no right shields, no nothing. Um, Because that's Britain is just a different standard. And of course, you know, the, the, the logic would be if you come out dressed like fucking Master Chief, you're kind of, you know, we're trying to go, you're asking for trouble. 
and there might be the legit to it, but at the same time, once that police precinct went down in Minneapolis, it was like, yo, it's open season. It's fucking whatever yep. you want to do, what you want to do. And that's why you're going to have fucking high-class stores in London or whatever just getting smashed up and chasing police down the street. None of this has got to do with George Floyd. This is all crazy shit. Um, I think I got one more picture. What is this? Oh, that's just the um, that's the picture of the the, the, the crazy people. Um, yeah, all these SJWs. They're, they're all white. Why are they gonna be crazy? What are you saying? They're SJ. They're all. They're more than us. All white. They're part of the new. They're, they're part new of the new religion, order. man. The newer the new, new world, world order. order. Yep. Yeah. Newer new world order here. Oh God. So I'm gonna get rid of this. To, I'm not kind of disorganized here. Look up Georgia Guidestones. Okay. That's, that's part of it. So, it, all this SJW shit seems like insane, right? What I try to do is try to explain it. It's like, there's a logical reason for everything that's going on here from the SJW perspective. You just got to twist your mind a little bit, and you're like, oh, this is, this is how it's working. Um, and the real key to that is to go with um, identity politics. And so, you know... One of the example would be is like in some like one of the damn Finnish countries or Denmark or something, they brought in strippers into grade school and they did they had them show pole dancing to to grade school kids. Oh God! <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? School like, sucks. Well, how for does us this? Back then. How 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 does this make any sense? What kind? Of, how can you logically? Okay, here here's explain one. It, explain here's it, Eddie. one that Mr. Jones has been talking about where. Um, they bring in drag queens no, no. to read yeah. to little right, kids right. explain, in libraries. Explain why this would be considered social they, justice. They want the little kids to be accepting to all this and train them. <laughs> so they want them to good. be accepting to strippers. Why? D there, there's a key word. There's a key word you got to keep. See if you can get it. Oh, no, I mean, I think I find it in here. I don't know if it's in this exact words here. It Oppression. Is. Oppression's oh, the key word. I was about to say acceptance. Um, <laughs> no, it ain't. It's, it's, yeah, it, these drag queens are being oppressed. And, it's and it's more like, than just acceptance, tolerance. tolerance. Um, I think I think my, Martin Luther King might have talked about tolerance. I do not quote me on that. I'm not sure exactly. Tolerance is simply. It's more than just. It's just a, a, acceptance would be the word. It's like, oh, we're just gonna accept difference we're going to tolerate it we might not like it but we're going to you know let it live but we would be different that's what kind of taunts can kind of lead to or acceptance um there's more than acceptance here it's like no this is your new way it's about strippers in grade school this is how it's going to be i don't have a problem with that <laughs> you got a problem with that <laughs> just... a lot of parents did have a problem with uh pedophile uh drag queens reading to their little kids and a lot I of didn't have a problem with that one either. Because <laughs> they came here the and got like kicked out or something. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. So basically, in the identity politics is going to focus on um, oppression. And it's like these are normally things that you're going to be born with. So it's going to be something like, oh, well, you're born black. And so therefore, you're uh, oppressed because basically you're not white or you're born female and you're oppressed because you're not male and he's like white male is like the top and then everything else has to follow down low and then when you mm. combine something like in intersexuality it's going to be things like your gender your race your class your sexuality is a big big ability thing about this and then anything that can lead to discrimination and over here on this, I got a Wikipedia page for intersexuality. It's got like this sort of like this, um, just a bunch of, I guess you would call them Venn diagrams. Um, yeah. And it's like, um, okay, so let's say this great thing here is just, you know, that's that's your race, okay? And this this like green one over here is, is your sex, okay? And so when you meet in the middle, you're going to have combinations of discrimination, all right? Most of this is your what you're born with, and I would think that there would be a decent argument that even people who are trans, they think that they're born with some kind of body dysmorphia, that they're they were born like a man, but they they're kind of destined to be a woman. Um, that's why you would have like um, young 
I mean, parents pushing young, young kids who don't know really what the fucking difference is between a male and female. And then, like, we're going to, oh, oh, well, my little cousin used to play with Ninja Turtles. It's like, oh, is she a guy? It's like, do we need to make her a man? We need to freaking, you know, do the damn puberty blockers and then make her into a man. Yeah, because she likes Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. And she don't like Barbie. So, therefore, she's got to be a dude. Um, Yeah. And so. Messed up. And that's like a. I know somebody that's like wouldn't let their kid play with. They considered action figures dolls. Yeah, I mean, so. Yeah, or or you or you. It's, it's also they might. My dad would say that's kitty shit, and you know, yeah. get out there and shoot guns or whatever. And I'd be like, fuck you, and I would play even more with toys. Like I want to play with my and, penis, Dad. I don't want to yeah, play with yeah. guns. And so you have this intersexuality, intersexuality thing, that you know it links up. So you might you're just right here from this example I'm talking about. And so um, let's just say just she's a black female. So she has two levels of um, discrimination against her. Okay, let's top this off. So she's going to be also – she wants to be a trans man. Okay? <laughs> oh, no, no, she's a black male. Okay? No, no, well, somewhere in there. She wants to be a trans man, all right? And so we're up in – we're up our, our level of um, intersexuality. Now we got three discrimination points. Oh, you know what, Eddie? <laughs> she is identifying as a lizard. And we're going to use some Eddie's termination because Eddie, Eddie's, Eddie's in this, Eddie's in this shit. Bad name here. So Eddie, it's like you want to level up higher or you want to level up lower. Right, that's what I can't figure <laughs> it's out. Bad name. It's, it's, um, well, think about it like this, Chad. It's something, most of the shit you're born with. And I see even said it, tr- your transsexuality is like something you could be born with. You're born with this. You know who else was born with this shit? Nobility. They were born nobles. It's like an inverse of nobility, except it's like op- oppression and discrimination, racism, misogyny, all of that shit levels you up. And so you're, some of your most people, your highest peers are going to be crazy, furry, tranny people. <laughs> it's like they're the lizards. more – Yeah, they're yeah. lizards. Now, you understand the logic of this, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 so there's a logical reason – well, we gotta have we gotta have to show this stripper's oppression to these kids and say, well, you know, it's okay because here's a, here's one thing about why you gotta be a warrior and why you gotta promote it is so what if you're outside this? What if you're a white male? You don't have any of these levels of discrimination. So, oh, the best you can be, Eddie, is an ally. And so, as an ally, every we're gonna have to talk about everything racist, everything sexist. Mark Wagner, Marky Mark, used to be uh, apparently a racist shithead in the gang. We're going to have to cancel that motherfucker. He's got canceled recently. And then so, <laughs> so we've really got to push this in. Everything has to be bad all the time. Because if it's not bad, then you're not going to have um, your religion. To about. Yeah, you've got nothing to complain about. So you have to have racism every fucking where. You know what I'm saying? So let's say, okay, let's just say we disband. Just really <laughs> let's just say we disband the police. The police ain't there. There's no police oppression for black people. Well, let's just say it magically. Then, we know it's not going to happen. But if it just magically happened, okay. okay. And then they'll get so targeted the, by everything else. What's what's your next? They're not going to be able to rely. You, you on need the something police. else, right? You need something. To, what's going to be? It's going to be white people. White people have to hold down black people. It has and it has to be. If you're going through this model, it has to be fucking forever. Something has to hold you down. And you, and you see where this doesn't lead anywhere. There's no way out. You can only get worse. And that's where where a lot of people, they say that they eat their own. SJWs eat their own. They end up fighting themselves. Yeah. Because, yeah, because you're, you're looking for shit. Anything you says, something, just the slightest thing, is like we're going to take this shit to the maximum extent. Because if we can't have immense racism, immense misogyny, Amidst everything fucking misery and terrible all the time, then our religion is gone. God's dead, man. Is this like the UFO community <laughs> whenever they find out something? <laughs> Eddie is also discriminated against. He is a lizard woman queen, and he is cold-blooded, and he came from Mars, and all of this shit, because X-Files has been canceled for years, and on top of that, for the last half of the X-Files, it sucked. <laughs> He the last few, been, yeah. yeah, he's been discriminated against for like 20 something years. Back in 88 and uh, you know 90, 
when the X Files was out, he was top of the world. Okay, but now <laughs> no one believes in lizards no more, Eddie. And the fucking lizards are done. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> We, they, they need to like refer, they need uh, you know reparations for the X Files fan in the X Files community. <laughs> uh, there's been a little bit of UFOs coming back. Did you see the um? I guess because of COVID misery, I guess the Navy or whatever or the Air Force started putting. Like, let's just throw this shit out there. They put out all that stuff <laughs> just to uh just to put it out. You know, oh COVID's out. COVID's out. No, that's how they sneak this stuff in. Well, I mean, this is what I'm saying is if Donald Trump had, you know, oh, his day one of president, his pre- day one of presidency, I was like, here's their, here's what's going on in Area 51. Here's what's going on with, you know, what was the shit with the battleship? The, the battleship disappearing was a real thing. We got teleportation technology. We know how to alter all the dimensions and shit. And we've got teleport, we can go to Mars anytime we want to, just step through a wormhole. He uh, would be on there on Twitter. Yo, I've seen the wormhole. It's like the greatest goddamn thing ever. It's I'm so proud of America. Yeah, we're, and we're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to put a wall around the wormhole because we're going to stop the aliens from coming through. There's They're the illegal thing. aliens. <laughs> Black World's never going to actually reveal what they have. You see what you're saying? He, he's, he's so deep state. It's like Donald Trump isn't deep state enough. Are you saying that? No. I'm saying they're leaving him out. Yeah, that's what you're saying. He ain't he ain't deep state enough. He's not he's not a part of the inner inner cult. Yeah. They know he would talk. Yeah, he's a useful he he's a useful tool. That's what Steve Bannon said about him. Yeah, well, there's certain things like it makes you wonder, like sometimes, like, oh, well, we've had all this information, but we're gonna slowly leak it out because clearly oh, as COVID as about. COVID has proved anything, the freaking public cannot handle shit. No, I mean, it's like just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a, this is not a, like, this is not like a world ending crisis we're in. And you would have thought it was like aliens came down and said, we're fucking blowing all y'all up, period. That's, I mean, it's like some people uh, reacted no. like it was just the worst thing ever. Here's I, the thing. I, hang, on, hang on. I thought that um, after, because Bernie fucking lost. I thought that after Bernie lost, I thought that um, because of this COVID shit, you know, just putting the pain down that all of this crazy kind of intersectional SJW, crazy. I thought the religion was going out. I thought it was a fad, dude, because it's been going on pretty hard since about 2013. And I'm like thinking that this is this is done. Um, you know, you had Dave Chappelle coming out with his freaking thing, talking about, you know, the people to be afraid of is you. And he pointed to the audience. Yeah. And then um, I, I just thought that that was, you know, people were not going to set being canceled no more. They weren't going to do any of this shit. And now we got fucking Pelosi bending the knee because just like that. And most of this is really COVID. This is really COVID. Um, I think you would have had you would have had some bad protest in Minneapolis. This whole this the whole world fucking go nuts. Yeah, that's what's really weird. It's like it's just it's like it's like last time we talked about it's a lot of pent up not really maybe even aggression just pent up like fuck man we've been under quarantine for so long just pent up fucking energy fuck this just just go out and do shit and it's like you know yeah i mean the first first thing interesting in a long time has been the riots the protests it's like it doesn't matter whether how you know whether you're on the the crazy let's go steal let's exploit and steal what we can or if you're like Dude, I, I really want to believe that we're going to change, make a difference. I'm going to go out there and we're going to protest, and we're not going to do the shit the curfew. We're not going to throw rocks or anything, uh, or anybody. Just even some people would just go and like, okay, I know these people are thirsty, so I'm going to just take, you know, gallons and gallons of water up there and just yeah. give them the protesters in. Then so they could, you could feel like you haven't done nothing for months, and now you're able to do something. And this is a part of something. This is a movement, and there's a lot of shit going on. You know, uh, there's legit you know problems with the police and then you got just fucking nuts and then it's just covid just brought this all out all out and so it's Come on it's in that too. freaking counseling spree going on on twitter right now it's just ridiculous it's like who are we can get and then um and I, th- I thought it was done dude i thought it was done nope nope covid round two scum i think you got a little frustration burnt the democrats beat them Freaking Biden is an old school Democrat, and Bernie was beaten. I thought that it was the end. It's like no, no, we just gotta really double down, and we gotta get out there, and we gotta 
we got we got to freaking get on our knees and worship uh, the cult of woke. <laughs> it's just, we're going to upstate. We're going to upgrade. We're upgrade, man. No, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, it's like having kids in school now. You see, it's like time. That's like I was talking to my daughter the other day. I was like, how things are so different now. Like, just um, back when we were growing up, what was the most offensive word that you could say when we were growing up? It was probably fuck. Like, literally, like, do you remember a time when, like, oh, my God, they said the F word. They said fuck. And it's like, you hear that all the time everywhere. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I mean, it's like. Now, you would not say the, the N-word, but, like, in school, and I granted, we grew up in freaking, you know, Redneck, Georgia. Hicktail, yeah. Yeah. Hillbilly Hicktail, it was nothing to hear the N-word all the time. I mean, it's just, you just didn't think anything about yeah. it. It wasn't this, like you were going out using it. You and just this heard is before, before Dave Chappelle, because I think Dave Chappelle kind of made it, um, I, I, I don't know if I want to say acceptable. Once white people were watching Dave Chappelle, and they would start saying the M-bomb. They would put an A at the end. I think yeah. whether – I mean, I think, you know, as a white person, you can't say it anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah. And – It's the same with the word faggot. Like, you yeah. never hear that now. Like, that's considered it used to be so all the time. offensive. But, like, when we were growing up, man, it was like I, – I, I told her, I said, literally, you would call your friends that. Is It would be the same as saying, like, hey, dub ass. You know, like, just – Nothing. It just yeah, rolled right up. Nobody ever week. took it offensive. Like when we would, it was just totally different back then, you know. Yeah, it's just um, I don't know. I don't. I don't say the N word. I don't say, you know, the freaking um, British cigarette word. And I don't yeah. say. I don't. I don't like C. I don't British like the C word. word. I've never been. I've never liked the C word. Um, you get called that shit online though. You know, all the dang time. And I've been called an N bomb myself. I've been called yeah. a pussy ass N bomb. Um, by black people, but you know it's um, one of those things. Is like, and do I need to get on Twitter? And well, if I if I was at SJW, I have to get on Twitter and scream to the high heavens about it because I'm just as a white guy, all I can be is outside of these circles. All I can be is an ally, and so I just have to pronounce it. It's um, almost like gangs back in the day, where it's like if you're a white guy in a black gang, you had to do above and beyond to prove your uh, yeah. loyalty. Like, they used to have the old joke, like, it's like, oh, if you see a gang of three guys and it's like two of them's black and one of them's white, you better watch out because the white guy's going to have to do something to impress them black guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, or like Hispanics where they have somebody that's non-Hispanic in a gang, you know, stuff like that. The, so, the wigger, man. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? It's like oh, yeah. you know, the freaking um, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, he's got to freaking do something to, like, earn the respect to them guys. He's got to go overboard. He's got – and that's the same way, like, you're talking about the allies. The allies are, like, they are fighting on the behalf of people sometimes that, like, don't – yeah. yeah. they don't care. They don't give a shit. It, it's white I mean, people who took those statues down in, in Britain. Yeah. Largely white people. Yeah. Um, and and there's and you know I say oh well, it's only black people looters is like, that is not the fucking no, case y'all haven't watched case. I've seen videos <laughs> yeah 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 y'all ain't seen shit there's plenty of, and it's not just oh well uh, every white person has to be Antifa no the fuck it ain't um, we got you know this the ally thing and it's like you kind of kind of sort of prove your street cred or whatever that you got that you're a man, a man of the streets right. by, by starting some shit um, I, I it's just Solidarity, brother. Let's let's pull bread. this up right now. I've got this in there. Uh, where's that shit at? I don't know where this is from, but this is white people washing black people's feet, and this is part of you know the overall protest. Of course, we're going to take pictures oh of the shit because, because gotta everybody's got to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, if and, you're going to do you, something, you got to make it public. Yeah, and so we're going to kneel down. We're going to worship these black people's feet, and then we're going to wash them. Um, this ain't got shit to do with Black Lives Matter or George Ford. This is crazy, okay. intersectionality, yeah. freaking damn SJW okay. nonsense. Okay. And, and you, it yes. only makes sense in the words of there has to be massive racism, there has to be massive misogyny, there has to be massive transphobia okay. all the time. H here's there has to be a like common enemy. You know, and that's yeah. what it comes down to. If you want to get a group together and you want a group to, like, come together and be solid, common enemy it's it's basic art of war from like eons that's all yep. it is yep um and i think you know it's just straight tribalism it's like you haven't even they haven't even really looked into the dogma or whatever it is 
it's like, oh, we're part of this group. And so this is how it's going to have to be. Um, and then so, oh, and, and um, where's Pelosi now? Kneeling. I got this oh, Pelosi yeah. kneeling down. Get her this off. Is, Get her off. <laughs> you, calm here's down, the Alec. thing is like, I see the white, it's like washing the black people's feet as like, I'm guessing it's like, oh, I, we apologize as our culture has put you down for so many generations or whatever. Same with like, they, they deserve reparations because they were s- slaves back in the day. That would yep. be like somebody coming to my house and being like, hey, your great, 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 great granddaddy like squandered. He like freaking like, you know, conned my great, great, great granddaddy out of some money back in the day. You should give me that money. It'd be like, I don't give a fuck. Can yeah. you tell you who he was? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's like yeah. And how many great great granddaddies are you know on, on different sides you have? There's like a lot of them, right? I'm out. Yeah, exactly. shit yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's just. Um... And this is why the aliens don't really want to talk to us. <laughs> poor, Ed, I'll blame poor, poor, poor Eddie. He's been left out. I, he don't know what are the one of those circle columns he's in. He's in that fourteen of them though. <laughs> but I, I see um, you and you had a civil wars of some sort in the Republican Party back pre-Trump as well. You had um you had the tea parties and shit like that. You had the uh, the, the you had like Rush Limbaugh and stuff was the official official line, you know, and so um they had to kind of in the I think you had Breitbart on Facebook and stuff like that. It really came through and started pulling together, started to develop a new line. And so you had shit like the new Republicans, which had uh, Eric Cantor and Paul Ryan and stuff. Eventually, all of these fuckers, they're, most of them are gone now. Boehner's gone. I believe Boehner's gone. Um, yeah. and, and so, and I hated the Republicans. I thought that they were just a bunch of mealy mouth shitheads um, until Donald Trump. And what I was immediately enthralled by Donald Trump. He came down. From the freaking golden staircase or whatever, and he went up to the podium. He says, "Well, those guys in Mexico, you know, they're not bringing their best. They're bringing rapists, murderers, and some good people." And as soon as I'm like, "What the fuck's he talking about, dude?" I'm enthralled. <laughs> and he would get up there in those debates, and he'd be the uh, biggest guy there. He would be clearly the star, and he outshined yeah. every fucker there. And I'm like, "This guy, and he's not even Republican. He just get up there spouting He's really some crazy not. shit." Uh-uh. It's yeah. just like he's he just kind of like his own boss is like, I'm going to be gone. <laughs> he's kind of a loose cannon. And it's yeah. like sometimes you just be like, what the like. fuck is he talking about? Yeah, take turns. It's just, um, it's it's like he's just, I was, he was, he was the troll. And so I, yeah. I was, Definitely. I was enraptured That's what you by the troll. And I was the first one that I know, and I'm not a Republican. I bought the MAGA hat. I had it. I was the first one I knew I had it. I ended up giving it to Buzz, Eddie. I would go to Buzz, and I would tell him, it's like, did you know that CNN said that the people who were voting for trolls, that 40% of them would like to, you know, to, uh, the, for the Confederacy to win? It was something like that. It was some kind of r- ridiculous CNN poll. I'd tell that shit to Buzz. They wanted the South to rise again, and then Buzz had a kiss a twinkle in his eye because Buzz is a troll as well. He's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the maximum uh, yeah. most trolliest well, shit ever. Uh, play that Hank Williams Jr. music, man. <laughs> I took um, I took it, the MAGA hat and I boxed it up on um, Buzz's frozen truck. So I froze the hat and I stuck it into his truck. So as he's working through cases, he ends up opening it up and the hat's in there. <laughs> I was number one. I converted him. Remember, remember Jerry? Remember Jerry? Because he was the hardline Republican. And so he was like, oh, I'm, I'm a real fan of Ted Cruz, man. Ted Cruz doing great. And then the next one, it would be like, the Ben, ben, ben Brain no. Surgeon guy was doing pretty good. And he switched like four or five fucking times. I'm no. talking about Trump is going to whoop me, their ass. Me personally, I was for Trump because everybody else had skeletons in their closets. Are you saying he don't? I was about to say, he might have the the least amount of skeletons. You're full of shit. You're full of shit, Eddie. It wasn't about the skeletons. He had the least amount of skeletons as compared to Hillary Clinton. Let me me try to save you, Eddie, because you freaking shit on yourself. (laughs) When he gets up there and talks, he, he's not from a script, so a lot of people simply say it's from the heart. Now, it's a narcissistic heart. He has, he has the best heart. It's the stable genius heart. 
but you take him as real while everybody else gets up and they give you a speech. And he only has ever did speeches a couple of times. I think he did it, a, a, you know, a, a COVID, the COVID speech. And um, I'm pretty sure the shit from a couple of weeks ago. I don't, let me see if I pull that damn thing up from my <laughs> pictures here. Uh, uh, where, where's he holding that damn Bible at? I had that shit. I'm not seeing it. There it is. Well, it's kind of like back when like Hillary was running for president, and everything she said sounded like so robotic. It sounded yeah. like it was so like rehearsed. You could tell every, she had a rehearsed answer for everything. So it kind of made like even on her best days, you're like she sounds full of shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, just like you know, you know how you just talk to people and you're like that is the freaking status quo answer, full of shit I've ever heard in my life. You know. <laughs> Did you actually hear some of the debates she did with Donald Trump? Oh, I yeah. Never, I mean, I heard the excerpts. Yeah, I, I've heard a few, and, you know, she got trashed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's why I can't wait to see, like, him go up against Biden. And it's like, and, and I'm not a... Be I'm, I'm kind of like one of those people when it comes to, like, po politics like that. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I mean, it's like that. I figure, like, it doesn't really... I mean, they're going to freaking... it's. It's one of those, it's hard to say, like, you don't want to say, like, oh, one vote's not going to matter, but at the same time, it's kind of oh, like... Really? The way our country very, is, it doesn't. I mean. Exactly. It would be different if it's like, I mean, it's like, I mean, just like when he won against Hillary, it was like, it's clearly like a, it's kind of a, the setup, is the, the you know, the collegiate vote and all that is very set up a very certain way, you know, and I get it, but it's kind of one of those, but I'm always just one of those, like... Yeah, it's gonna suck either way. You know, yeah. who cares? You, you know, know why the electoral college is like that, Eddie? Uh, I forgot. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> Basically, the, um, so you get big states don't get, you know. Yeah, you know, something what's, like that. What What would happen is, um, the the founding fathers were a minority. They were rich, fat white guys. <laughs> Most people weren't even fat. Definitely weren't rich back in you know when they're they're founding the country and so what they were worried about would be what's called um tyranny of the majority that's the big big key and there's huge debates about the tyranny of the majority of course you know whether the president should be a king or whatever but i think this even goes back even before that because the president was not immediate thing i don't know exactly when washington became the president they tried to do it without a president um but the 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 fear was is that if, if it's a complete democracy, we're a republic, not a democracy, but if it was a complete democracy, the majority Dem would overrule. And and then things like that, um, where you you know, the they could overrule someone like as a minority like black people would always be voted down. Always. It would be it would be um, we've got bits of institutionalized racism, but it would be built into the core system of you know Americans institution and what you would essentially have would be you would have LA and New York and then anything control else control everything yeah they would control everything and nothing else matters now the way it is now it's the swing states who kind of control everything so you're going to have Florida and all you're like upper in the midwest kind of thing upper like Minnesota Michigan Ohio. things like that yeah Ohio the they they would flip. Hell, maybe Texas is purple now. I'm, it probably is. Um, so uh, so Texas went from red to purple. California used to be purple, and it might go purple again. The way this fucking crazy world's going, who know? Who the fuck knows? Everybody's saying that Trump's going to win, and like to some big landslide. You don't know, man. You don't really who knows? know. Yeah, he had. You have to run. You got to run your game, and it's run your game in your swing states. You have to get the swing states, and so things like Florida and shit, you got to, you know, basically bow you down and give them what they want. Yeah, you need them, and so um, a lot of people are saying because of the, the riots, he came out, and I think the first thing he said during the speech before he, I mean, they had already blown up the protesters, mm -hmm. and he came out there. He says, "I'm a law and order president." That's the first thing he said, and you knew what he's going to say. We need maximum overwhelming force. And then he went over here and he had the, the stupidest fucking damn pose I've seen. <laughs> I think, I don't know if somebody asked him if that was his Bible. They should have. They definitely should have asked him if he's It's like, here, hold this up. <laughs> Why? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an accurate statement. Is it? From CNN. Is it <laughs> even a Bible? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a CNN. Um, so it's big news.
No, he did say he was going to deploy the military. In, he uh, didn't uh, do that. That's the um, The military police was out there, Eddie. I don't know what you're talking about. You could, you could, you. It sounds like you mean you were part of Lion CNN. <laughs> <laughs> There's always ways around everything. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. And you, you knew he's going to have to do it, especially when they called him Bunker Bitch the all night before. Oh yeah, exactly. It was like, oh yeah, fuck this. <laughs> I heard a couple of things about that, but not too much. Well, think- he's got the National Guard, but the National Guard generally does not, in those situations, were not carrying loaded weapons, and it didn't take long for people to figure that out. Um, so there's only so good, you know. It's like, you know, it's kind of like over in Britain. It's like, oh, they got nightsticks. Yeah, this isn't gonna yeah. last long. It, it was, um, and so they had to, the, you know. I blowed the fuck out of them. And so there was like, oh, we're setting the curfew down. When As soon as I knew that they were setting the curfew down, I remember Mayor Keisha Bottoms came out the night that they were looting in Atlanta. So I'm like, we can't protect you night, tonight. I'm like, she's that's, dead, dead. that's the damn truth. Yeah. That next night, though, they had the National Guard. I knew it was like, oh, if you're going to go protest or whatever, if you don't make that curfew they're set, they will shoot your ass with the best non-explosive tear gas weapons they've got. It was exactly. exactly what happened. Um, and so... You know, if you're a hardcore protester, getting arrested is kind of like a badge of honor. But, yeah, you know, it's like prob- street cred. Yeah, probably should have violated some jaywalking or something. I don't know if I want to take tear gas in the face. And well, arrested. not even that. It's like getting arrested is not like, oh, I got arrested. Cool. They're going to let me out in the morning. No, that shit costs money. Yeah, you get, you're you- going to end up with some fucking probation. By the time you get done, you're going to end up owing thousands in freaking, you know, fines and whatnot. It's like, is it really worth it? You know. I mean, for some people, yeah, it would be. I'm going to go and I'm going to take my punishment because this is what I believe in. And so, especially if you go back to the nonviolent protests of this, of this you know, yeah. the real civil rights movement. Because I hate saying it like that, but yeah. Um, but it's just, uh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> but, but you know, after all that done, that's when your SJW shit really, really came in. This when you oh, started. Oh yeah, it's like they were just waiting. Yeah, and um, and you had people, you'd have videos where they come out and say, like, as, as a white person, you need to take the knee. And then they would get them to take the knee while they're on fa- camera filming that shit. And it's like, okay, well, I want you to apologize, apologize for being white privilege. I mean, essentially. <laughs> And she would do her best because she's doing her best as she thinks it's the democratic way or whatever. It's yeah. it's the blue way. It's like this is the deep deep blue way. You, you're getting um, you're getting fucking tricked. And that's my opinion. You're getting tricked yeah. into the cult of super woke. Um, and it's 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 like a spiral that you cannot get out of because there's nothing. There's no there's no way up out of this. So if you take, you know, if you take away one of those circles of oppression or whatever. You know, they're just going to try to make another one there. It's intersexuality. And if you were to somehow to take all of them away, you would essentially have to be a white male. Um, that's the only way out. And then it's like the best you could do, you would be on the lowest end of the um, the social justice totem pole, man. You're All you could be is a mere ally. And so you'd have to do some crazy shit. <laughs> that's yeah, there was, there's the Lincoln. That's where Lincoln got... Um, the Lincoln Memorial got goop on it. It was a pa- that was after paint. Trump got elected, I think. No, that was uh, the the when he went to the the uh, the night of the uh, the riots when he was the bunker bitch. That's when they went over there and broke I green. I think they on did it once before. That, they that's probably how. Like the like probably, probably like the church did. Nestor, uh, you know, church in her, the church Winston, whatever the fuck his name, Winston Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, no, Ch- no, Church like Church right Winston after- Hill. Now, uh, as I far as uh, they tried to damage some stuff, when he had went to the bunker, had, I don't know if they disclaimed. I know he was like he said he claimed he's like, oh, I was just doing an inspection. But one, one thing people don't realize is uh, the president they make him do certain things. Like yeah. it's not like he's like, oh, the Secret Service will like you know do this. He, it's not like in the movies where he's like, I don't want the Secret Service going here with me. I'll be fine. No, they don't ask him. You go back and look at all those things about when 9-11 happened, where they literally picked up Dick Cheney and freaking took him to Camp David. And like, literally, they like, there was, it's just like, they walked in his office, grabbed him up, picked him up and toted him. They don't really give you options. And that's one thing that 
people kind of forget. And it's like, I don't know the hell. They might have just been like, no, nah, this is where you're going to be right now. Sit down and shut up. Like, I mean, you know, you, you don't know. Um, I would think he would have probably said something about it, you know, of like why he was there. But who knows? You know, I, th- oh. I thought he had his own personal security instead of Secret Service. Still going to tell him it's what he's got to do. Still, yeah, there's the, there's very strict rules about things like that. They and a lot of times it does. I guess they don't really come out a lot of it because they don't. But there's a lot of things they don't want you to know because if you do know, it yeah. make it easier to turn things into. You can exploit situations. Yeah, like but, um, the Kennedy thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's like literally all that stuff about Cheney and Bush during nine eleven. It was like that didn't come out until like years. I think he was out of office when all that stuff came out about like I think even Cheney might have wrote about it. Where it's like basically like they just came in, picked him up, and toted him out. And he's like, "What the hell are we doing?" They're like, "You're coming with us right now." That was it. Like no questions, I, no nothing. You remember Eddie? <laughs> he disappeared. Yeah. He disappeared. Yeah, he they, literally they tried to find. They made jokes about him. We're checking every cave and everything, and looking for Dick Cheney instead of Osama bin Laden. Yeah, it's literally like they he disappeared because like that's that's what they're, it's like they're it's almost like well the, the president bush is was like seen everywhere. That was fine. Well, that was important. Well, that's like it's kind of like with the story thing. You remember he had pictures of him taking the book after he'd been told. It's like, can you believe he sat there? And it's like, well, I guess he could have got up and jumped around screaming bananas, you know, and like made everybody freak out. But also, <laughs> no, he, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Say I'm out, exact, y'all. What exactly did they his expect him to met. do? Did they did, did they think like let him know and he was just going to stand up and rip his shirt off and have a Superman symbol and be like, I must go now? I mean, it's just fucking, you know. How do you take something like that? Yeah, exactly. Sure, it's like, especially pre nine eleven, you'd be like, "What? What? What the fuck?" Like, you know what I mean? You'd be like, "What? What? What the fuck are you telling me?" Just uh, like you know, COVID coming and going to get us all. Did we prepare? Fuck no. Hey, They're very few. No, nope, nope. They're going to wait till the day of. They're going to wait till the NBA and fucking uh, goddamn Forrest Gump get the COVID. It did before, yep. before. Now we're going to go eight. Now shit. we're going to take Once, this shit serious. <laughs> I thought we killed the COVID dragon. <laughs> that we got to go. You got to look your back, Eddie. Set back freaking three or four months ago. We were all scared, and now I wasn't. Well, we were, we were all just sad because Kobe Bryant died. We didn't have time for that shit. <laughs> we I wasn't scared. <laughs> yeah, because you weren't out and about. Um, and so actually, it, it, I was. I know you. Yeah, you freaking going out and getting some damn uh, root beers, <laughs> but yeah. um. <laughs> Every time I go to the Walmart, put the quarters in and get a root beer. Me and Buzz had followed it early on, so I'm like, wow, this is fucked. And so, uh, yeah, and I, I knew we was going to hit it retail. And during the early times, everybody was covered in face masks, gloves, everything. All the shelves were empty. <laughs> yeah. Thank I mean, God a lot of people didn't have toilet paper, man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I had, had it if a I couple didn't masks. Like 400, you know things of toilet paper right now freaking ridiculous <laughs> i had a couple of masks um that my sister gave me for a halloween thing like uh, a couple of years ago i used one of them and i used the other one when i go out i didn't have it there's like certain places like you uh you have to have yeah. one on um uh, i haven't been to any but I, I know my wife had they went somewhere one day and they're like yeah you had to have one on to go inside or something um, yeah, wh- I was whoops. so pissed that I didn't still have my Darth Vader mask because I was like, fuck, <laughs> I'd be wearing that shit everywhere. I would just where, be riding around town wearing it. Yeah. Where, where was that, Eddie? You said it, you said the day there's something to take the mask. Uh, places in uh, Panama City. Okay. Just, you know, like PC Beach. They, they wouldn't let the you beach? in without it. They, if you had to have a mask to get on the beach. Uh, no, there's like certain stores. Okay. They wouldn't let you in without it. Like... Um, the name of that little area, uh, Seaside Town. They were uh, some of the stores wouldn't let you in without a mask. There were certain other stores uh, near the uh, PC Beach area, but uh, most of the places were opened up. I can't stand, you know. I shave, you know, before I go to work. Wear the mask during the day, and toward the end of the day, I get stubble, and that freaking mask, that shit drives me nuts. But originally, I wore the mask for a Halloween costume idea 
lone survivor. <laughs> as you can see, yes, as dear. You can see on my screen, <laughs> yes, dear. You predicted the whole thing. We got you, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, that was a fun game. People actually did cosplay for it. it yeah, no one actually has a fucking idea. What you have to do is you got to make your own YouTube channel and just do survival horror <laughs> indie hipster shit the way I do for Castlevania hipster shit. Okay, oh. then you push it out. Some you guys need to watch this hipster video. Okay, about this indie game that no one's ever played before. <laughs> Oh, people have played it, and they said it was good. It was short and fun. That was just the developers, okay? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> there were some Let's Players that did it. That's how I got introduced to it. I was, I was like, what is this game? Let's I love that picture of the dude like, still on the, the sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> priorities, man. <laughs> Which priorities would that be? Sexual priorities, okay? The only priorities think, that matter. I think he would be canceled by the old SJWs. The sex matters. <laughs> the sex matters. Who would be canceled? <laughs> the guy with the freaking sex toy going to the pictures. Oh god. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it, it, we live in uh, we live in a society, sir. <laughs> See the aliens. This is their reality TV. This <laughs> is why they shit. don't talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think at some point, though, it's like, I, I used to think, like, a few years ago, I thought, like, you know what, eventually all this shit, the pendulum always swings. And then I was it's like, you know what? It's going to. And it's going to be big. <laughs> it's going to be like, who gives this a fuck? Comical. Oh, you're sad? Who gives a shit? Oh, you feel oppressed? Who gives a shit? Get up and go to fucking work. I mean, it's like, I could totally see it just be, like, the boo and a massive swing just going to the other side of just, like... Let's just be offensive to everybody all the time. Yeah, this that's you're talking about maybe 2025 20, and up. Um, I think you know there's a huge history of American puritanism from the goddamn pilgrims. You can't do this and this and this, and that's actually built into this SJW shit. If even though this is a worldwide cult religion thing, um, I think we got some a lot of Americanism going on there. You can't do it anything. Um, imagine something like Drawn Together or Dave Chappelle. These days, South oh, Park yeah. is South Park is um, because it has a point or whatever. It always has a moral point. It's no, always it accepted. Yeah, it, it, there's it a moral point. A, yeah, they're it's built into been every around episode. long enough. Well, that it, has, kind of. it has, yeah, it, it has a, like, it, uh, every episode yeah. almost has a, some type of message they're trying to, yeah. you know, ironically send. Yeah, even if it's cynical. Yeah, um, like Car Cartman does something bad and, and he has something bad happen to him like that. It's it's a there's a formula to it, Eddie. There's, you're yeah, it's a pain. message. Um, uh, there, and then of course, if you're a, a college um, kid who's got the you super woke and you've been educated in the humanities department, which is the craziest SJW this department. So history, um, Finneman, you know, not, well, I mean, yeah, pretty much history, studies. gender studies, freaking um, the the foreign languages, English, things like that. Let's provide the best wokiest people, and then so um. You could get Aaron. You could um, dissect the Last Jedi, even though me and Chad have also dissected in our own way. You could deeply dissect the just Last Jedi and, and and freaking South Park and all of these things, and you could turn it to the power of woke. Okay. Well, it's kind of one these of the, the old these saying old is educated oh, people. It, it, there's always the old saying: "Those who seek usually find what they're looking for." And it's yeah. kind of like, dude, you could go back to stuff from the fucking nineteen. 30s and be like oh man can you see the message they're trying to send in this film be like or they could have just been saying fuck it and they wrote it they weren't trying to send but you can tailor your fucking message to whatever you need it to be if you yeah. look hard enough you can talk about the racism in the three stooges yeah where, where at the standard it's like oh that's promoting racism but there was standard you know there was a poem in america where that was shit was standard issue and that's what that was. It's you can say, the South, man. you know, I'm, I, I don't know if there's blackface in there, but there's tons of blackface back in the day. And oh then, yeah. Um, here's the, the whole man, the mammy thing, Aunt Jemima, and yep. then you had, is Aunt Jemima still on the fucking syrup? I think she is. Yeah. They uh, changed his change. dash. I don't know if Aunt Jemima is. Let's find out. Look her up. I'm um, not sure. The land of lakes Indian is gone. Yeah. Well, they got rid of the freak. Uh, yeah, Aunt Jemima, frozen biscuits. Yeah, she's still old there. Yeah, it's what that's a freaking. You know, 
you're it, it's a conflict. It's like, oh, well, you're taking a black person off, but just it's, it's, it's you know, she's Aunt Jemami oh, from like, you they know, we it. gotta freak out. They took her off and replaced her with Captain Crunch. What? I don't know. Crunch. Captain Sir, I think you got some fake news going on. No, 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 no. Go to ancientjemima.com. Just go to ancientjemima.com. God. You'll see it. It's Captain Crunch blueberry pancake syrup. Ant. A U N T J E M I M A dot com. I typed it in wrong. I don't want to know what type of website you went to then. <laughs> just Google Ain't G. Just Google it. Okay. Yeah, just Google Ain't Jamama. It'll bring up AintJamama.com. Well, she her face is right there on the top, dude. Yeah, exactly. But look at the the the, the freaky Captain Crunch, man. Yeah, but they haven't they haven't canceled Aunt Jemiah yet. No, but they 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 they're she's he was on the, I mean yeah I, I got you that they but you know he has to have the ocean blue goobo, goobly goob syrup yeah, that, okay that looks to very put on interesting to, to put on the uh, freaking uh, cabinet very crunch bad pancake. pancake mix wait a minute that's what just some cross mean? promotion because it says we're Aunt Jemiah syrup in there although you know that could be the beginning it could be Captain could Crunch be he's a white guy but he would be a white guy. Taking a black lady's Wait, that would just, be all kinds right. of intersectional. We would have to cancel that is, shit. Is Captain Crutch a pirate? No. <laughs> he fights the pirates, all right? He fights the songies. Yes. He's not even a fucking admiral yet. Do we only do are we only got when we're here is looking at this shit it's like do we only got black people or the lightest skinned black people um doing Aunt Jemiah? Is that that's not the same family or whatever? These are all crisis. These are all crisis sectors, Eddie. Um, it's Kitty, they also changed say? Captain Crunch. I mean, not Captain Crunch, but uh, Toucan Sam. Yeah, I think it's to fuck them all up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how how he could be woke. Um, but yeah, it's just fucking you know try to find just racism and everything. And this is you know, uh, it's I don't I don't know, man. It's just. They did, man. They turned to KSF. His his thing has got like a rainbow in it. His new beat, man. He's like for the homos. <laughs> That's <laughs> disappointing. Um, <laughs> this is the worst podcast we've ever done, bro. We're fucking canceled, Eddie. I didn't mean it as a derogatory. I was just shortening the word of uh, the homo sapien. Okay, all right. Or homo um, That's what it was. Freaking just yeah, I don't. I, it's it's so bad, man. Because you know, just if you go against them, then you're automatically racist, misogynist, transphobic, and so it, it's like, and so you kind of understand what kind of position they have Pelosi in, where she's got to kneel. Um, oh my God, they she got wants to stay in power. Frosted flakes mixed with Fruit Loops. God, I can't <laughs> I can't believe I gave up cereal. Oh man, it's diabetes, bro. You can't have that shit. I do. Only a few cereals it, I just, liked, and and they got rid of them. Policios. Yeah. Policios. That could be something. But yeah, going back to what you're saying, though, it's kind of like almost. It's almost reached the point if you don't align yourself with them, they almost. It's like it's the thing. If you're not with me, you're against them. Sometimes yeah. they even not even like it's not even saying you're against. You're not against them, or it's almost like abstaining from saying anything is almost they take that as being the same it's how Which dare you weird. not kneel yeah you know how saying? dare you well, it's really almost got like that with masks it's like how do. dare you not wear a mask and it'd be like most of the oh. world doesn't care yeah yeah um it, it it's kind of a bully thing i think there's a there's power to be had so let me let me come over here and this would be a good time to transition to this uh where if i could find this damn thing not not that oh this not one here time. The intersections um, of Aunt Jemima, Captain Crunch. I so Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Nietzsche is. I've heard uh, this guy. Yeah, before. he's he's early. He's not really postmodern modern philosophy, but he's a philosopher from like the 1800s, and he's kind of around the same time of Karl Marx. I can't I remember exactly. Um, and he's like a 
pre-existentialist, but I think he's kind of like a, a like an early ex- existentialist. And existentialism is kind of like um, kind of a searching for like meaning and being inside yourself, as opposed to you know traditionally you would say, well, God gave you your meaning. And then there's plenty of things with Christian today. Well, God is your meaning, and it's kind of like finding your own way or your own path and your own meaning in life. Um, and it's like an anti nihil nihilist thing or whatever it is and so um but he has done all kinds of crazy shit i i don't think i don't think nietzsche's taught in high school maybe elizabeth will know but uh i don't it's it's heady shit it's kind of heady shit uh complicated stuff you know when you start reading some of these really crazy way out there philosophers you kind of gotta read a sentence and then like what the fuck was he trying process to process what he's talking yeah, you gotta about. process it um and one of his big, big things was kind of master versus slave morality. And so what the master morality is would be considered the will to conquer or the will to power. Um, the, the, the guy that's in, in charge, the guys who are going to go out and get shit done. Um, and he's, you know, he's experiencing itself as determining values and not needing an approval. Um, he would call it, the, it's, it's, it's translated as a Superman, but when everybody says Superman, you know immediately you think of fucking Superman with shooting Krypton Knight or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Um, so they try to rephrase it as the Ubermensch, which is a crazy German term. Um, it's kind of like the moral man. Is that he is not going to be bowed down to anyone. He would never kneel. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, but when I was reading comments from, from some of this shit, I just see the commenter mentioned this is slave morality when the people were kneeling down uh and, and so and i started thinking i was like yeah yeah i knew because i'd read about this shit i'm like this is exactly what it is um and he says that um unlike master morality which is sentiment slave morality is based on resentiment devaluing that which the master values so things like property getting money um getting the bitches all all that kind of shit that's what you know the shit that the slave or the other doesn't have, and so, um, so those the masters are strong. Um, he's out there. He's the businessman. He's getting things done. And the, the slave morality originates as weak um, because it's a reaction to oppression. And there's your key word, Eddie. That's the word I was asking you for. Oppression. oppression. Because you have to be op- you have to be oppressed to be. For, there has to be massive oppression for the SJWness to really. Go in. Otherwise, it's there's no point for it. You got to vilify the oppressors, which would be the guys who have the will to power. So any kind of capitalist type thing, particularly capitalists, um, very successful actors. You got to cancel the actors. That's all up in Twitter, canceling people who are important or famous. Um, slave morality is the inverse of master morality. So it's that's what I'm saying. It's an inverse nobility. And this is something you're born with. It's the opposite. It's, you're born with oppression. And as such, it's characterized by pessimism and cynicism. And of course, cynicism would be, you know, this is how the world really works, and we can't change it because what would happen is like if you actually think you could get rid of racism and misogyny, which has to be everywhere, you have no point of your your, your whole worldview evaporates. There's no there's no um, hope in this. It's like everything's fucked all the time. Well, there is a way. But that's not going to happen. Lizards, fucking lizards from, lizards from outer space. I got yep. you, Eddie. Jesus. Yep. Um, slave morality is created in opposition to what the mor- morality values is good. So it doesn't aim at exerting one's strength, but by subverting. So we're going to subvert. So that's how it's literally, instead of going out and finding the top people, it's considered what would be the bottom people, the, the lower classes. They are the new top. And see, and so you're, um, where's this at? But a few compared to the rest of the week, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're trying to get the masters to basically bow down to the slave morality. Because you're not, you're not, if you're the lower class, you can't be in the higher class. They can't, they're, they're, there's not a feeling that you're going to be able to, to move up, which is one of the core American ideals. And so we're going to bring them down. And now Nietzsche likes to use um, Christianity as a slave morality, um, humility, charity, pity, 
And basically what I would say is like you take like something like in the Middle Ages where you have uh, knights. They have – they're noble. They have swords. They have big-ass armor. And they have horses. And you know what? Peasants ain't got none of that shit. So a knight would just fucking dominate and destroy a peasant like he ain't shit. Um, thugs on horseback is where it's historically looked at. Thugs on horseback. But oh, if fuck. you made him religious, pious – you kind of you got to give him. He's got to protect the princess in the castle. You keep giving him a new point. It's kind of like one of the core, the author, the the, the king author, like you know mythology or whatever. Um, if you make him have all of these like uh, virtues, virtues, what they would call him. He's virtuous. Then he's not going out and just killing peasants because you know he can and it's fun. Um, and so that's like what the way Nietzsche would look at say you're enslaving the masters essentially. You're enslaving the master class. And so he would look at at his slave morality. Uh, and I think the SJBW shit is kind of the same way. It's, you know, we're going to put oppression at the top, all right, the top of the, the pyramid. And, and everything goes down and goes through the lens of how we are oppressed. And, and so everything has to be racist. Me and you, if you sit there and take the crazy – because we've said some crazy shit this podcast, Eddie. If you go back and listen to it. <laughs> We've said some really crazy them. shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and all of them. Mentioning the aliens. Well, I'm not talking about fucking aliens. That's the side joke because we have you here. There will not be so many aliens and lizards in here, <laughs> but because Eddie's a part of the conversation, we have to have Great Yargus, <laughs> Devil Hole, and all of that other shit. Hey, but man. we've said some ridiculous shit, especially if you separated what we've said and then put them up as things on Twitter. If I had a Twitter channel, if I was like, if I had 10 million followers and I'm I'm saying this shit. Pitchworks and torches coming at you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You would take pieces about this. You would (laughs) focus it on the oppression and it's like, I'm the worst (laughs) fucking person ever. Do you think I'm the, you know me, do you think I'm the worst person ever? You think I'm a racist? No. You think I'm a misogynist? No. All right. (laughs) Okay, but they, I love, they, they would make you to that, though. Yeah, you would become that. You would have to become that. And even people like, say, Mark, uh, Marky to Mark. People in DC. You, I'm a saint. Yeah, you're you're a saint. But it's so it's like somebody like Marky Mark. Okay, so he was a shithead when he was young, or somebody like what was it, Kevin Hart, who said some, who was making jokes. It wasn't even particularly oh, yeah. a good joke. Makes a joke freaking ten years ago. We're going to go dig this joke out, and it's like, oh, well, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether he apologizes or not. In fact, it makes it worse if he does apologize because yeah, he's acknowledging it. He's acknowledging yeah. it. It's yeah. almost better if you don't do uh, anything. Yeah, and, and so once you're in that loop, you can't get out. You're fucking stuck in the cycle, and, there, and there's no way out. And, and the reason why I can say this shit, and it's like fucking heavy shit, is because I'm a nobody. Yeah, if I was one yeah. of those will the power guys in the top, the focus of the slave morality, to bring down, they would bring me down. You, you get what I'm saying, Eddie? Yeah. So Nietzsche predicted this shit 100, 150 years ago, or whatever it is. He's seen it. The kind of way the Karl Marx is. Um, Karl Marx is studying in high school. Karl Marx is the top guy to look at flaws in our system and capitalism. Um, he's the top. He don't have a solution to it. His solution is fucking go out and be a hippie living in the goddamn woods. It's a stupid solution, but he looks critically uh, at it and, and he can that point to it. work. Yeah. Mainly because the Soviet go. Union fell apart. The Soviet Union is not uh, Marxism. The Soviet Union is Leninism. Lenin sit there and said, I'm the, the only way that we're going to get this to work is I'm going to be the super authoritarian. Fuck you. This is my way or the highway. But didn't he actually take pages from Marx? Yeah, and he converted it over to Leninism. So he's gonna make he's gonna make socialism and communism work through super authority. Is that we have to own the means of production? So that didn't work. Yeah, of course it didn't. And if you went back to, um, you know, if you was. If you really look and see what the SJW shit is, what kind of actual change have they made in this world besides getting Pelosi to kneel? Um, destroying everything. Did they destroy the people who are the will to power? Did they destroy the capitalists? No. 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 Who, I mean, who, the thing. who has the power? <laughs> the individual person. No, not no. the individual fucking person. The corporations are the power in the United States. This is the United well, States yeah. of corporate America. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. 
corporate America, big pharma and big, big pharma. beef. Those are all corporations, dude. Okay, so Johnson, if they Johnson, were, DuPont. Yeah, that's if they the were, ones that matter. Yeah, if they were really going to make a difference, that's who they have to take. And uh, literally, Carl Bring Marx would say, big pharma. take the means of production from them. They would have to take the will to power from them. And you're looking at a revolution is what you're looking at there. And, and the American Revolution, that was fucking nothing. The British let us all because they had too much shit going on. Um, the French Revolution or, say, the crazy shit, the Maoist Revolution, the Chinese Revolution, the Chinese Civil Wars, so that's fucking where people die and then governments come in and then we kill these governments. And you get the Rose-Pierre shit where everybody's got to die. Um, and so I don't know what the SJW ultimate plan is because they don't know what it is. They're just running in circles. Okay? They're running in circles in each other, chasing chasing the latest racist thing. And if it isn't racist, we got to make it. Um, and so they're not, they're destined to fail by, by this. They're destined to fail. Destined to yeah. fail. And it's like, well, when someone comes and asks you to kneel for George Floyd, you tell them. You might have a real problem explaining how it's separated because it took, where are we, where are we at here? We're at an hour, hour and 15, 15 minutes. Okay, so if <laughs> I explain this to one of these uh, SJWs, would they actually uh, explode? Well, what would happen, Eddie, is that you would be you would be forced. We've had a basic thread going on, but you would interject aliens into it. <laughs> and then we would be like, the fuck's he talking about? we got to cancel this racist alien. <laughs> or maybe they would run away. It's the... It, it, you get the community of a thing and they'll be like, it'll be accept. They'll be like accepted. It's like, Oh, well, you know, as a white male, you need to, you know, kneel and apologize for, you know, your, your, uh, you know, gender ancestors, and you know, ancestors did your things. Your white privilege. Of course, what if your I your white them? privilege. I love my right pri- privilege as I work 50 to 60 hours a week doing manual labor. I, I'm feel very white privileged. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. just, working my ass to death but it's that that'll be it'll become a thing where it's like oh yeah you should totally kneel be like nah i'm good but then uh-huh. you will be you will be marked as the asshole yeah you know yeah, it's you're like, the you're, what if i told you i am not uh you're not a, a human white male. You're not i a... am a dinosaur and then i would probably want you, to, you know uh, what you would do here Eddie? Devour. you would really really because you're half hispanic you are you would really really go in heavy on being a latino Yo, man, I'm a Latino man. I don't, that's yep. not my. That's <laughs> it, it, freaking. Just go all in. You tell them the food you make, and it's made largely crazy Latino shit. Although with Eddie, it's also crazy fucking Eddie shit. Fucking pickle <laughs> tacos. That's <laughs> what I do. And, and you would have to. You really, really lean into that shit. And so, and, and this, it's identity politics. You have to re- go into your oppressed identity. Remember the the Venn diagram? I done lost that shit. Okay, Is it up here? If I said, it's right here. You okay. gotta get you gotta get one of this no, going. In the middle there. You going for the dinosaur. middle? Dinosaur. is in the middle. The dinosaur is the most Almost oppressed. Almost extinct. <laughs> Almost. I extinct. am the last of my kind, <laughs> and I'm being oppressed everywhere. <laughs> I would just say it's like, oh, I'm being oppressed because, you know, it's like I identify as something else. You you could say that you identify as a furry and you're offended that um, yep. I'm you know, offended by that you're offended you're, that I'm offended I should, that you classify me as human. <laughs> That's yeah. what it would be. And you're 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 a hairless furry, okay? No, you're a ge- nice you're a genderless Harris furry. You don't know you know that you're a furry, but you don't know what you haven't decided oh, what because you have body dysmorphia. You don't know which kind of furry you are, and you're transitioning. <laughs> you, there you have, go, Eddie. I forget the name of it, and you might have seen it with the body dysmorphia. Have you seen the thing where like people want to cut off a, an appendage, like say their leg or their arm, and they will like yeah. tie it up behind their leg or something, and that's like their thing. And I'm like. Wow, that's really that's out there. That they're like, I, I really want like to not have an arm. Or they a want a disability. They yeah. don't even want. They just. I get. I don't know what it is. I saw a thing on it one time online. I fell down a rabbit hole. You know how you do it yeah, on I, YouTube. Yeah, people. Uh, what was it? 
they go out in public like they'll like they'll take their arm and they'll string it up like up to their like shoulder and be like so like when you see them they look like they are lo- or missing an arm like elbow down and it's like and they then they have a problem though is trying to find somebody that will perform the surgery because most doctors are like fuck no i'm not cutting half your arm off for no damn reason so then they start going to like these mexico doctors and being like i want you to cut like half my arm off or cut my leg off it's very i mean it's out there but the idea that it's like oh somebody's oh, into that that's very what? weird you got so many yeah it's like the people that um Mr. Jones is talking about pouring bleach in their eyes so they can have a disability and people will feel sorry for them. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's, it's fucked up. It's along the same way because you, you get um, yeah, you, you get, get your oppression a lot. Oppression there against blind people. <laughs> you get a disability. You get sympathy. A lot of it's just straight sympathy. It's if you're basic human emotion, we sympathy. Um, and I think you get that from um, – you would get that from, you know – yeah, the this the picture I had where they're uh, washing feet. That's what that's if, so fucking weird. It's so weird, but like, what if you're like a, got a feet fetish? I bet you're like, oh no, man, this you're is all my into time it. Show. Yeah. Oh, it's like uh, when you see all the Twitch thought. Although I think they made the feet thing. They the Twitch people has figured out that you can't because people because the, they were putting the feet out there. It's like oh, well, you could be a booby stringer. But you got to wear clothes. But you could be with feet list at a time, and it, there was a lot of people getting off on that. So, no, you got to put that. That shit needs to be on your OnlyFans. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That that shit with your arm fucking cut off. There's it's, it's like weird. It's it, it's called body integrity identity disorder. Oh, uh, basically body image, physical body suffers uh, an intense desire to amputate, amputate a major limb or sever the spinal cord in order to become paralyzed. Oh God! I mean, like I mean, we're, 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 we're going straight to the center, man. I mean, that's like pretty yeah, much like I mean, stuff right there. yeah. And I, I I watched a video about it, and it was like some I think it was a girl. She would like pin her leg like up around her thigh and like put pants on, you know. And she looked like she was like one leg, and it was just like very. Very weird, but uh, and, uh, I mean, if you had that your whole life, you get kind of used to people looking at you. I, I would guess. Um, I, I don't think you would ever get like where you weren't annoyed about it. But for her, that would be the first time people would look at her like that, and I would think that you would get some sort of. I don't. I, gratification is one of the, one of the words I would use. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm using. Um, some kind of gratification where people are looking at you because you do not look like them. There's something wrong with you, and I'm using wrong in quotation marks. I mean, yeah. disabled people are disabled. Um, but this fits into that intersectionality shit to a T. Uh, and it's fucking bizarro, Chad. Thanks for It's me. weird. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, it's like, when I saw it, I'm just like, wow. And it was like, because I was like, oh, they want to look like they're handicapped or whatever. And, you know, and then they're like, I'm trying to find somebody that will perform the operation. And it's like, oh, wow, that's fucked up. You know, it's beyond just looking like it is actually being it. Then, yeah, it's like, I want to be paralyzed or whatever. It's just, I mean, you know, teach their own, whatever. I've always lived off the uh, what you eat don't make me fat, but. Just I found it very odd. Yeah, well, the the problem was to each his or his own is the the way this works. It, it's not about each its own. It has to be you has to be pushed on you. The warrior part of the social justice warrior is the the shit that annoys people the most. If you're off in your own thing doing your you know whatever you wanted to do, but you have to push your will on the other people. And once I see that pushing your will, making people kneel down. Making Pelosi kneel down because she's had to uh, continuously deal with basically the French. So you're, you know, Holandro Cortez. Votes. Well, there's more than just wanting votes, Eddie, because somebody like Holandro Cortez is so out there, so bizarre that you're, he's a, she's a target for Republicans. So like, look at this crazy lady saying, like, Elaine and Armour are talking about we need to disband the police, which you know apparently they're going to do. Biden is not. People don't give enough. Biden is not a dumbass. He didn't get to be vice president by being an idiot. Now he's at the early stage of going insane or dementia yeah, or whatever. He's, he's got some they, dementia going on. When they said, "Hey, man, we, we're going to go disband the police," he's like, "No, I will not support disfunding the, the police." 
or disbanding or dis defunding the police. And then you've already got all of these people coming out here and say, well, well, well by disbanding, we really mean reforming. It's like, uh, no, this band's pretty damn strong. You're going to get yeah, rid of the like, fucking police. Yeah. That's what this they said. This band is a lot different than, dis than reforming. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they said. And they CNN had the councilwoman on her. He's like, okay, if we don't have police, who do I call when I need help? And she said, and the, the councilwoman says, well, that's somebody that that's really comes from a place of privilege because so many people call for help and they just don't get it. And they, it's like a deflection and yeah. using her of white privilege because the, the reporter or the journalist was white, the, uh, the interview person. And, and it's like, uh, that doesn't answer the question. Who do you fucking call? Like, you're going to be calling the county sheriff, is what it's like, because that's the next level of police. Yep. <laughs> and that, it's, it's like, let's face it, none oh, of those departments are very funded to begin with. Yeah. I mean, they're all overtaxed. They're all over. I mean, they're, you know, it's every city I've ever been in, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, the, you, you're, you're running like 100 police officers and you really need about 300. I mean, you know, that's yeah. just the way it is. And, and as we like to say, it's always your quality of help i mean look at what you get paid look at you risking your life and look at, well, look now what the fuck you have to deal with oh you yeah exactly you're already most, looked at you know, like an if you're the police you if you're the police it looks like you're in the middle of this venn diagram because you're yeah, the most discriminated yeah, the against most people want to is. kill you if you're in fucking britain people are chasing your ass down the street because you ain't got nothing but a baton and so how many new cops are you going to get you're only going to get people leaving they might not yeah. leave immediately they might wait a year or six months to save face. It's like, oh, well, you know, I found a new job as, um, as an Uber driver. And I was thinking, I'm really interested in being an Uber driver now. So we're going or, 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 to really, we're gonna deliver Papa John's pizzas. That's where we're <laughs> going to go right now. Um, it's because I already know the streets, man. I was arresting everybody there, and I'm going to bring them pizza now to make up for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, get the and then they'll be, like, the they'll be like, well, you're not Italian, and that's racist. <laughs> Like you're bringing us freaking <laughs> Italian food. <laughs> Just, I'd have lost my point now. I, I, we were talking about we, we were on something. Mario costume and do it. Does that make it right? <laughs> that would be a uh, appropriating. That would be that would be Mario face. Okay. <laughs> Appropriate culture. Yay. And there's been people oh, like, um, you know, you probably have seen Hello Vicky. Oh, I mean, Yoa Vicky. Woa Vicky? Woa Vicky. Who, who was a white girl. Woe was, Vicky? Woe Vicky. Oh, oh, Vicky? Yeah. Woe Vicky. Yeah, who was a white yeah. girl. And she acts she, black. Well, she had apparently some sort of um, percentage of blackness in her, like, DNA. And as soon as she saw that, she just went so Far. black. Yeah, 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 and and then so I've heard of her. And it was like point like, one percent or something. It yeah. was, you know, and she ends up, she ends up pointing a damn AK at Snoop Dogg on a freaking video or whatever. Tell my yo Snoop Dogg, I'm coming after you or whatever. And it's just and you hear Snoop Dogg, he's sitting in his couch. And I'm like, yo, I just went out, I just lifted some weights, y'all, and, and this is the dumbest shit ever. Who <laughs> <laughs> like, <here> gives a <laughs> shit? <laughs> whoa, Vicky. Yeah, whoa, yeah. Vicky. And there was the yeah. uh, was the um I cannot remember her name, but I watched a documentary about her, and she was a uh, damn I can't remember state either. I think it was up up Midwest, like Washington. Or, yeah, and I know was, who you're talking about already. The one she that was, was like the, uh, a, a, the NCAAP uh, person. What? Yeah, what she, she was like the head of that that chapter of the NCAACP. And she was a white girl, and she just was she just really really tanned up. She might have sprayed that tan on. And then put dreadlocks on, but she was white. She was, um, her brothers and stuff were like adopted or foster kids, and they were all black. And so she said because she was brought up black, even though her parents are white, that, that, you know she was that she was black. Um, there's there's something kind of to that, and but no, she's not black. She's white. Eddie's got Eddie's just fucking raised his head into that. <laughs> So but that's cultural appropriation, and so many people got in her shit because of it. So if I hang out with Komodo dragons long oh, here enough, we go. am I a Komodo dragon? I mean, well, that's you're, kind of you're like the show different it. strokes. It's like, you know, they had the two black kids, and it's like, what about freaking Kimberly? Was she supposed to be like, I'm black now because my brothers are black? Or were the two black kids supposed to be like, we're white now? Because be white, and... You get that in the uh, black community as well. 
um, you know, oh, well, you went to school and you're educated, you're fucking, and you're talking like a white guy. So, you know, and it's like um, almost like to a point, especially with older people who just kind of dropped out of school, it's like, well, you know, it's almost like, okay, so I fucked up. Well, you kind of need to fuck up too. Mm-hmm. Which I think it's kind of very defeatist. Um, dude, it's shitty. That's shitty. And I've, I've, I've seen that at work. I've seen that at work. Um, where one of the guys was fairly, he was very well liked, very charismatic, and he was educated. And, you know, this was just his side job because, uh, he, he, you know, his dream job he was doing or whatever. And then, um, and then there was an older guy there who ended up being fucking stealing. And being a, just a, a damn drunk, who's like, who it was called in him a token, you know, a, the token black guy. He's like, oh, well, he's really just a white, but he's, you know, and, and he's like, he's not really black. He's just weird. And a lot of people would probably say that about Obama too. Um, yeah. But you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's Obama, fucked up shit. It's Obama's not something I can really talk talk about. We're easier to talk about Eddie being a Komodo dragon than that shit. But I've seen it. I've seen that shit happen. And and, totally and pisses me off. At least as a white guy, it pisses me off. I'm hoping that uh, well, black people will see that, or if they're being talked, especially if they were the ones who found out about it and saying that they were the tokens, that they would be pissed off too. Um, you know, if you're well spoken, you're well spoken. I'm not well spoken at all. I'm a I, I can write or whatever, but I sound like an idiot. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's all of us here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's how it goes, bro. <laughs> Dude, this, has this podcast been fucking everywhere or what? It's been everywhere. It's great. It's great. We've got lizards. We got <laughs> yeah. racism, misogyny. We got the philosophy aliens. going on. The aliens are watching us, getting a kick out of the reality TV. Yeah. Well, had I been, um, if I had actually had, was, you know, famous enough or whatever, or had my YouTube creds, got my hits, that I could monetize the video, this video would be massively demonetized. <laughs> And, oh, yeah, and oh, I would be yeah. probably getting strikes or whatever, <laughs> community guideline strikes. No, they would just shut you down automatically. You'd just shut me down, would just disappear. Yeah, my phone, I would be canceled on Twitter. And canceled on everything. I'd be canceled you have on, no even though I've You're never lying. even logged on to Facebook or Twitter, I would be canceled on Facebook. You'd be the new Alex Jones. He got hey, shut. I would be a hate monger. I, I I blame it on you, Eddie. You brought your fucking lizard talk to this shit. Hey man, lizards are awesome. <laughs> Turtles are awesome too. We should have gone and uh, caught those soft shells. Well, I don't got much to, more to really to add, Chad. Um, the, the the Sony press conference is literally two days from now, and I would assume Microsoft's will be in a week. I don't know. Uh, Ubisoft and everybody else, they all have dates now. So um, we'll probably do some kind of podcast about after that. We'll, we'll look at some of the stuff and we'll talk about it. And then we still got to do our Last of Us 2. Um, still can't talk about that shit right now. We could sit there and say all the crazy shit we've said, but if we start talking about Last of, two, Last of Us 2 spoilers, we'll die, Eddie. Fucking YouTube will shut us down. Yep. How are They'll they come after us. Okay, you, you mentioned the K word, all right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're going to talk about that. Um, my friend's supposed to let me borrow The Last of Us too, so I, I don't have to pay um, pay Sony that um, super woke Sony pony money. I could I could just play it. What if uh, it comes out and it's like everything we've been told is like? What if they're just like, no, none of that's true. Wait till they play it. Well, the the problem with that chat is it got leaked already. And yeah, exactly. Already. Yeah, um, it, it's already been leaked. It, it, yeah. It's it's not like okay, so this was an early build or whatever. It, it might have got a. They got like a leaked in April or whatever, and then the January build or something. But the the cutscenes, the acting, and the cutscenes, all of that shit's actually done like a couple years in advance. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, it's yeah, done it's done. all put together. Um, and so I got a whole host of crazy uh, pictures and memes for that shit, and we'll do a podcast then. I don't know which one of those we'll do first. Um, I don't know if I'll even wait to. Well, we don't need to wait to play the game. We're just going to bring out Metacritic and fucking laugh at that shit. I mean, yeah, exactly. Honestly. Bring up user value. Yeah, and just and just start reading that shit. Just fucking, um, because how how really how different is it going to be from the first one as far as gameplay? I think it's a little bigger. It seems like it's going to be pro. From what I understand, it's going to be bigger. But I mean, you can tell by the gameplay footage that it's like yeah, pretty much about the same on as far as how things work, the mechanics of everything. Yeah. I haven't looked looked into it, but what I think is um. 
when when the second Tomb Raider reboot came up, Rise of the Tomb Raider came out, it it was still you know a cinematic game when you're moving forward. But they would come to areas that would be like kind of like little hub areas that are wide open, and you could do little side quests in them. That's what I suspect it's going to be because um, they're what saying I'm they're saying it's like twenty to thirty hours. I'm like. That's two times longer than Last of Us One. I don't think yeah. it's a narrative-driven story that either y'all got a really complicated shit, and it don't seem like that, or it's just it's going to be a whole lot of if you want to go fuck about, you can. Um, you never played the first Last of Us, right? Uh, no. It's definitely an Eddie game. Um, it's a good game. The story yeah. is. I, I've really played good. a version. Oh, I don't want to hear you playing. It was like some kind of weird indie thing. Yeah, of course it was. It had cordyceps in it. Of course. It, it, it had kind of the same storyline, but it was more shooty shooty. You you watched it though, right? Uh, Did you I watch it on YouTube? A little bit of it, and I was like, "Well, cordyceps zombies." I I think it's a watershed game. I think The Last of Us one it was very important. Um, it's like what they've been trying to. It accomplishes what. I think a lot of those movie type games have been trying to do I did for see so many Days years. Gone. Days Gone. Days, Days Gone is not a freaking movie based game. It's it's not very good. Um, Days but, Gone was like. But you know you had all of them. They would try to be movies, but the movie part of their game. I mean the movie part of the mo- game sucked. It would just normally like, well, is this good compared to an actual movie? And you say, no, fuck no, it's just shit. But Last of Us. It was, bro. And so it's like a 15-hour freaking movie. It's like a, a massive journey. Um, and uh, I don't want to go too deep into that, Eddie, but uh, shit gets real in Last of Us 2, and it ain't what we think it is. As Luke Skywalker would say, this isn't going to go the way you think it is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are they going to bring back the cordyceps? You'd wish, Eddie. I'm at the